have to do something. We cannot just remain silent when we see something wrong. We are not against Israel, we are against occupation. The state of Israel should exist. Someone's ideal notion of Jews and Palestinians living in harmony. That's someone's fantasy. What is peace? What is peace? Ah. Oh. Expecting to make connections with people, I'm expecting to come away a different and uh, more well-rounded person. I definitely want to learn more about community and how how just your individual life and, and the decisions you make every single day, the way you think, the way you view the world, how that impacts the entire world on a larger scale. I've done so much research on this area and I already know a lot about it, so to be able to go to the places that I've been studying for so long is really, really exciting. The fear of someone else not understanding me in the in the sense that they create a barrier that I can't approach. Well, I've never traveled abroad before, and so I have really no idea what to expect, really, like, for real, I really have no idea. expecting it to be this nice I guess um, and people to be as friendly as they are and talk to us because I've been in other countries and they just ignore you and here people make like a big effort to go out of their way and That's say cool. hello and we buy some stuff and we're given tea and we have long conversations I mean a shop like shopping takes so much longer around here because you actually encounter the people and you talk to them about what they do and and how they live and they want to share with you you know, and they want you to share as well. We're just learning so much, like, every hour. Like, it's not even a daily thing for me anymore. It's like literally, like, everything that we're doing is just like this bombarding of information. And I'm having a hard time processing that, being able to reflect and, like, figure out what I actually think about each thing. You know, it's so, it's so mind-boggling. It's so big and yet so small at the same time. And it's, it's a new experience in thinking. Being on the ground is totally different. I had no idea how much I didn't know. I, I don't I don't even have any idea where I'm going to end up at the end of this trip. I guess I'm viewing the issue of peace in Palestine as something so desperately needed and how it seems like it's something that's right there and so obvious and able to grab but there's just all these r strange little roadblocks that are in the way. They all want peace. Everybody that I've met has want, wants peace but I don't like why is it not here? An increasingly complicated world and a sense of danger, a sense of being isolated, a sense of having enemies. People want to create a, a very simple, coherent, clear narrative. This is who I am, this is who I am against. There's two narratives and arguably both narratives are correct. Different stories are emphasized, different dates are emphasized, different statistics are emphasized, especially. Christians have a claim to Palestine. Muslims have a claim to... That's a never-ending debate. Both of these nations are wounded. You know, people walk around here, like, there's trauma everywhere. If, if I believe that the Jewish people have a right to live here in Hebron, then rather than just talk about it, I'm here. The way to put it is that there isn't a good occupation. You know, an occupation is an occupation. The, the history of the Jewish people is such that the argument that peoples need somewhere which is their own is a very compelling and strong argument. It's not an argument for policies which are unjust to others. The narrative of, uh, of the Palestinian position is that Palestine is a country that goes back thousands of years, right? Jerusalem was its capital. I mean, all this is, is intellectual nonsense. How do we help people on both sides get beyond their past, their hurtful narratives, their victim mentality? How do I hear both narratives and then 
figure out what is the truth, what is actually going on. You know, it's not black and white, it can't be black and white here, it never will be. It's always going to be this gray area. And it takes so much mental capacity to find a solution. One cool idea that we've been introduced to is the idea of a third narrative. You're kind of just dropping both both sides and going forward. Because I'm like trying to find the third narrative, but I'm not really there yet because I see two distinct sides in the narratives. But I feel like within each of those narratives, there's so many like sub-narratives. So there's no middleman to tell me what I'm supposed to see. I want to see it for myself and make my own deductions, and that's that's probably the best part of this trip so far. How this isn't a political thing or a religious thing. This is just a, a, a humanity thing, and these rights of the people are being broken. You know, those country borders, is that really, you know, the, the end goal of creating this peace and this brotherhood? You know, um, shouldn't we be taking those, those borders down and, you know, instead of building them up? You're so young. You're so young. <laughs> the first thing that, that came up was, oh, you're so young. Um, and that was from a member of the audience, which was, it was interesting because she just very adamantly wanted to let me know that, you know, the world's not a perfect place. And this kind of idealistic thinking, while it can be admired, it isn't functional. I guess I've been trying to fight the fear of hopelessness and this like overwhelming like dread for like what's actually going to happen in the future. And so, I mean, I usually like to take initiative and to like get it figured out and like solve it, but like it's so many people have tried to do that and I don't I barely know the conflict. So I just have to take this like feeling of like urgency and like like I need to solve this off my own shoulders because I, I can't. I think this experience has somewhat tempered my idealism when it comes to looking at, you know, problems in the world like this one. Not because I didn't already know that such things are complex, but I think being, being directly exposed to it, you know, is pushing me toward that cynical, acceptance of the way things are and uh, you know I don't want that to continue the peace process we are not against peace I mean some, sometimes we believe that Israel has like hijacked the word peace Israel wants peace and Palestinians wants war no that's not true we want peace and we are the most interested part in having a successful and meaningful negotiations process we are not trying to push an anti-Israeli message we are we want you to engage in pro-peace work mm -hmm. and that means pro-peace means human rights means equal rights mm -hmm. means a sense of justice for all with the idea to, uh, to combine uh, peace building and uh, an interfaith dialogue and use religion as a tool for the promotion of peace in the Holy Land because you see, reconciliation isn't part of the thinking here. Not on either side. It has never been. Not violence as this pure, holistic way of living. It's dealing with everything. It's, uh, it's that you refuse weapons even if you were offered weapons. And you deal nonviolently with every conflict that you face in your life. I believe that nonviolence is not giving up your right to resist. Nonviolence is the best place where you invest your humanity and your pain. It's not all going to just change overnight. So a challenge for me has definitely been working through that. And rather than like getting upset that I can't help right away, I have to focus on just like bettering myself as a person in the sense of like my nonviolence practice or my patients especially. It's going to take a lot of work and a lot of time. I don't want to present here, you know, myself as saying just by talking about fear that everything is, is okay. It's the beginning of something that that is taking place. I think peace like really comes from finding inner peace first about what, you know, what these people are having to go through and then trying to spread that. This realization that, yeah, I'm not going to be able to solve the conflict, you know, like, that's not my role here, but I can 
you know, make a difference in my own life and in the lives of people around me, and that that's really like the best thing that I can do. I think it's important that we take the lessons that we learn here and apply them to our lives and not just share their story, but live their story in the sense of how we how we give back to our fellow man, how we live our lives responsibly. Every person we meet is to really get try to sympathize with them, try to hear their perspective, know that they're they're not just an Israeli or a Palestinian, they're a father, a brother, a sister, and that, that that humanizes them. We're all humans, we're all in this together, and that there is that like inherent goodness and trust and belief in humanity. There's like we have fourteen or fifteen people now going back to the US that know the truth. And like we can spread that and we can help change you know, the stereotypes and the paradigm. No one back home gets this. Like the news, the media, no one shares this, this side of the story. So it's up to us to do it. At least I am part of a solution today, not of a problem. I can make the change. I can see it. I can be it. You know, there's a reason why Gandhi says, you know, be the change you wish to see in the world, not make the change. Be it. Imagine being here again Here again Could you ever imagine being here again? Could you ever imagine being